Wow, only one of the 16 advanced classes in Star Wars The Old Republic can wield a sniper rifle. There's still plenty of cool sniper rifles available for you to choose from for your Imperial Agent Sniper. In this video, we'll be going over the top 10 most unique, oversized, and interesting sniper rifles available in the game. These sniper rifles come from all over the game. Some can only be earned through specific methods, while others are cartel market items that you can buy with credits from other players on the GTN, ranging in price from a few hundred thousand credits into the high millions. Number 10. The Bowcaster While technically not a sniper rifle at all, there are four different bowcasters available in the game that can be wielded by characters who would normally wield a sniper rifle. Due to their uniqueness, these bowcasters are quite difficult to get. You can't simply buy them on the GTN or the cartel market. There's two different ways to get these, so let's go over all four. The first is called the Assassin's Touch, and it has a gray color with aqua highlights. It is quite expensive and comes from the special event ambassador vendor located in the Cartel Bazaar section of the fleet, and it costs a combination of three different currencies from three different events. So the Assassin's Touch costs 17 Rat Gold DNA canisters from the Rat Gold event, plus 14 completed bounty contract uh, currencies from the bounty event, and 11 gray helix components from the gray event. From that exact same vendor, there's also the Precision Bowcaster. It costs slightly less, but it still costs that combination of different currencies from different events. So this one is 12 Rackwell DNA canisters, 10 completed bounty contracts, and eight gray helix components, and this one is a wooden color with brass colored highlights. Now, if you've done the Bounty Week event quite a few times, but you haven't done the other events, this one might be a good option for you. This one looks exactly the same as the last one, but is called the Elite Assassin's Bowcaster. It requires 38 completed bounty contract tokens, but it does require the hero rank with the bounty uh, reputation ranks. And here's the last cool unique bowcaster for those who could wield a sniper rifle. This was called the Assassin's Bowcaster, and it costs 12 completed bounty contracts and only requires the newcomer rank with the bounty reputation track. So if you're looking to get a bowcaster and you are a sniper, this is probably the easiest one to get, and it is a wood color with uh, silver or metal highlights. Now that we've got that kind of strange one out of the way, let's jump into the true list of sniper rifles. But it doesn't mean they're going to be the traditional sniper rifle that you'd usually think of. Number 9 is the Furious Gladiator Sniper Rifle, just for being so unique and so large. So this big, huge sniper rifle actually has a glowing red axe at the end of the barrel, and it is has a special animation. It has a bit of smoke floating away from it, much like the other furious weapons in the set. So especially if you're running a sniper who's maybe more similar to a Mandalorian, who's a little more rough, who likes to go out in the desert and isn't necessarily a part of the Imperial Agent storyline, the Furious Gladiator Sniper Rifle is really cool and has a lot of really nice details and even looks really good close up compared to many of the older sniper rifles in the game. Speaking of weird sniper rifles, my number 8 is Nahoot's Heavy Sniper Rifle. This sniper rifle is actually based on a boss that you can fight in the Gods from the Machine operation. This boss can actually stealth out, and this holographic form that it has is kind of a representation of what the boss looks like when he's stealthing out. So you can do some pretty funky stuff with this if you combine it with the holographic weapon tuning because it already has a natural kind of aqua animation on it, plus you can add the additional layer of the holographic tuning. So 
So for number seven, I couldn't quite choose out of these two very unique sniper rifles, so I decided to narrow it down to the Reputation Sniper Rifles. So the first one I wanted to show off in this category is the Outbreak Response Sniper Rifle, and it requires Hero Rank and six Rakul DNA canisters from the Rakul event. So this one you would have to earn over time. And it's just huge, it's this huge green sniper rifle. If you're looking for something green or looking for something very oversized, this is a very fun weapon to pick. Not to mention it is legacy bound. So if you have multiple snipers, you can share it between them. And here's the other uh, reputation sniper rifle that I really want to share off in this category. It's called the Grey Helix Sniper Rifle. And this is from the Gree event. It's quite expensive as it costs 24 Grey Helix components. And like all the other Gree weapons, it requires champion rank with the Gree. So you really gotta work your way up in the event to earn this one. What makes it very unique is that when it first came out, there was very, very few legacy weapons available in the game. Um, much like the previous one, you can share this between your snipers, but it's not as much of a deal these days since you can get a legacy bound sniper rifle fairly easily at level 75. This one is still unique, however, due to its quite beautiful built-in animation that kind of is representative of the Gree and their technology. It has some aqua blue kind of scan lines as well as a laser sight and little bits of green highlights in the heads up display or whatever it might be. The Gree are a bit mysterious. If you like the kind of odd, smooth, slick shape of this sniper rifle, but you're looking for something a little simpler without all the animations, or you're looking for something very, very easy and inexpensive to get, the Scouts Sniper Rifle is a very easy pick, and you can get this from the Adaptive Vendor in the Supplies section of the Imperial Fleet, and it only costs a few thousand credits. Number six is the Eternal Champions Sniper Rifle. I really like, I really like the shape and the uh, very subtle animation of this one. So this is from the Eternal Championship and it costs six of the Eternal Championship currency. And if you want to learn how to run this, it's something that happens in the later expansions that you can rerun to earn this currency. I've got a whole guide about it and it shouldn't take you too long to earn the six tokens for it. It's got a very uh, pretty design on the side as well as a built-in laser sight animation. Number five, the Trimantium Sniper Rifle. <laughs> this one just because it's probably the longest sniper rifle in the entire game. So this one is very, very much pirate themed. So to craft this sniper rifle yourself, you would need the schematic Trimantium sniper rifle item. Pretty easy to pick this up on the GTN most of the time. It will require crafting level 470 in arms tech and the materials are not not too expensive to get or you can find someone who's already crafted it and is selling it straight on the gtn it's a very ornate detail very beautiful looking kind of sniper rifle as if it's been passed down for a couple generations someone really loved this one and uh, you may have a similar silver version that you picked up if you were playing a sniper while you were playing the shadow of revan expansion on the planet of rishi If you like that idea of having a very ornate sniper rifle, but aren't in love with that very huge design, maybe you're looking for something a little shorter, there are two great weapons that have come out more recently uh, compared to the time of this video being released. So the first one is called Alter's Exquisite Sniper Rifle. And for those of you playing Galactic Seasons in the first round of calendars, that would be at level 45. Or if you're watching this video later, um, you'll be able to likely get it from the Galactic Seasons vendor. And then the other one is Alter's Ornate Sniper Rifle, which you can get as early as Galactic Seasons level 5 on the first calendar. Or later on, you can get it from the Galactic Seasons vendor.
If you like those handcrafted kind of looking sniper rifles, you're going to love the next one. Number four, the wooden sniper rifle. I've got a whole bunch in that category. So the first one I want to show you, and one of my personal favorites, is the custom built sniper rifle. So this is another crafted sniper rifle where you can get the schematic, usually pretty easy to find it, on the GTN. Or of course you can buy the sniper rifle straight from another player who can craft it. This one only requires arm stick crafting rank 100 to craft, and it, it just uses super cheap materials to craft, so the only hard part is finding someone who's selling the schematic or who has already crafted one. If you like that very sleek wooden type of sniper rifle and you're looking for an alternative, the V-311 Rotary Sniper is a really good option. It only requires a Valor Rank 2 on your sniper, so you literally would just have to play a single player versus player match, and you would likely be able to buy this sniper rifle from the combat section of the fleet from the PvP area. And if the wooden part of the sniper rifle is something you love and would really like to see more of, the BL-28 sniper rifle is a cartel market sniper rifle, but it has a very, very beautiful polished texture for its wooden sections. Okay, it's time to get rid of those old-fashioned sniper rifles and step into the technical age of Star Wars The Old Republic. Number three is the dark versus light sniper rifles. So these two sniper rifles are available through the dark versus light system, not the old event that is now retired. These are currently available. So the way it works is uh, for the dark side one that has the red glowing stuff around it, um, you need to earn 20 of the dark side tokens, which you can view in the currency tab of your inventory. This one, you will also need dark three to actually equip to your character, but you can always buy it on another character and just send it over to the character who can actually wear it. The light side one with a blue glowing animation built in. The Righteous Harbinger sniper rifle is very similar. It requires 20 light side tokens and the character who's actually equipping it will require light three. So basically, if I remember right, the way these tokens work are you can start earning them at level 75 and anytime you rank up your renown rank. If your character's alignment currently matches the alignment of the side that is winning, and you can see that on the galaxy map, then you will receive a token that you can spend. And these tokens are bound per character. It makes things a little tricky. Number two, the classic sniper rifle. If you're a sniper, especially if you're playing them as a true Imperial agent, you're probably looking for something fairly simple, a big ol' long tube that you can use to shoot something far away. I've got a bunch of different inexpensive and very simplistic options to show you in this category. The first, and one of my favorites because it's kind of obscure and very easy to get, is the X-115 Military Ripper, and you can get this on Tatooine on the Imperial side from a fender. They're on the main city of Tatooine where you land. They're going to kind of be up some stairs part way, uh, far away from where you come in the spaceport. This one costs a whopping 11,000 credits and you can get it as early as level 28 and it has a, a quite unique sleek look. Next up is a good one for those of you who like to do player versus player content. This one requires Valor rank 34, so it will take quite a few PvP matches to get, but it's by no means in the higher echelons of Valor ranks. 
This one's kind of a flat gray color and it's called the K-406 Combat Ripper. And if you want to learn more about how to up your Valor rank and take an estimate about how long it might take you to get to Valor rank 34, I've got an entire guide just about earning Valor and the rewards available. If you're looking for some that are very simple to get and you can buy from either the Cartel Market or the GTN, I also really like the Infiltrator's Compact Sniper Rifle. This one's pretty cool. It actually comes with an animation. Um, it starts off compact, as the name suggests, and if you press um, the draw weapon on your keyboard button, or if you go into combat, the sniper rifle actually extends to its full length. I believe if you put a color crystal in it as well, the color crystal will change the glowing color on the sniper rifle from yellow to whatever color you want. And another cool, simple Cartel Market sniper rifle option is the Firestorm HZ-77 sniper rifle. No animation, I just like the details on it, like the wrapping. And here we go, here's some of my favorite sniper rifles in the entire game. Number 1, the Heads Up Display Sniper Rifles. It's probably not a surprise that I like lots of glowy stuff on my weapons if I'm playing Star Wars The Old Republic, even if I'm playing a sniper and not a Jedi or a Sith. So here's three very cool weapons that have the glowy stuff built in. So I think a really big fan favorite is the Max Tac Precision Sniper Rifle. I like that this one comes in a white color to start with rather than the usual black or gray, and it also comes with a special heads up display that shows up only when you draw your weapon or enter combat, and the heads up display looks like a glowing circular kind of flickering uh, showcase. Maybe it's meant to be an easier way to see your target far away. Doesn't really tell us what it's for, use your imagination. This is another heads up display one that I really like as well. This is the TAC HUD Heavy Sniper Rifle. And this one is the classic black color. It looks like a really normal sniper rifle, futuristic one. And it has a kind of blue holographic display as well, but it's a square with like a, a vortex in the middle, almost a targeting device of some sort. Both of those are probably going to be decently expensive, but way less expensive than the very fancy uh, Jedi weapons or even some of the blaster pistols. So you can pick those up either on the cartel market or more likely on the GTN with credits from other players. And before I let you go, I'm going to show you one more really cool heads up display sniper rifle. And this is for all of you who really like the huge ridiculous sci-fi weapons or maybe Maybe you just like the color purple. This is the Teresian Head Hunter Grek, and it's got more scopes on scopes on ropes on scopes than you can shake a rope at. And it also has a very cool purple heads up display that shows up when you draw your weapon. And this is also a cartel market one, or you can get it from the GTN. And unlike the other two, it often tends to sell for a lot less when it comes to credit. So you might be able to pick it up for a bargain. I hope you enjoyed this big showcase of some of the most interesting sniper rifles in Star Wars The Old Republic, and maybe it helped you find something that you might want to use on your own sniper in the game. If you'd like to have similar videos about Star Wars The Old Republic show up on your YouTube homepage, subscribe to this channel. And if you want to show your support for this series, including ensuring the future of guides like this and guides about all other content about your favorite game, Visit Sutterista.com slash support to pledge towards this project. Good luck out there in Star Wars The Old Republic, and as always, Onomatophobia.